Nigerians react to statements credited from the governor of Kaduna State, uh, Governor El Rafai, sustaining, uh, sustaining Muslim Muslim tickets beyond 20 years. And House of Reps alleged fraud in unveiling of Nigeria Air and demand prosecution. This is Post Politics, and I am Mary Anna Pro. Former Kaduna State Governor Nasser El Rafai has been caught in a video saying that the Muslim Muslim ticket must be sustained beyond 20 years in the state. In a viral video, El Rafai was addressing a group of Islamic scholars and he told imams that he nominated a fellow Muslim as running mate in 2019 because he knew they would win without the vote of Christians in the state. Well, joining us to discuss this is Reverend Joseph Kaya. He is the chairman of the Christian Association of Nigeria, Kaduna State. Thank you so much, Reverend Kaya, for joining us and good evening. Thank you for having me. Good evening, fellow Nigerians. Great. Uh, Reverend Kaya, uh, it's, it's not new to see the former governor of Kaduna State um, caught up in these kind of controversy. I mean, he's always in the news, but no one would have seen this coming. As a, a person who lives and uh, resides and does business in Kaduna State, what is the meaning of this particular statement that's been accredited to the former governor? Well, if you know Erufai very well, the former governor of Kaduna State, then you will have to guess one million meaning to whatever he said. Because anytime El Rufai come out in public to speak, if you see him speaking to the right, be careful. He's actually moving backward. If you see him speaking to the left, don't turn right. Actually, be careful. He's going forward. So the problem with him is that he, he is not consistent and he is so slippery that sometimes you hardly can tell. But this particular video is a very simple one. Erufai is simply playing game and simply playing politics. And what is he trying to achieve? Erufai knows very well that before Muhammad Buhari became the president of Nigeria, he played this regional, regional card. He played religious card. And finally, when alliance came, they, they formed alliance with other political parties and became president. So Erufai is just smart, wanting to be the next Buhari. So he's playing a card preparing himself so that the Muslim world will say, oh, this is the, our religious champion. This is the man who defends our religion. This is the man who defends our religion. But I can say without fear of contradiction that for Erufai, he has actually failed even before he started the journey because Erufai do not have the kind of credibility, he do not have the kind of trust that Buhari enjoy from the people. Erufai is known by many who have known him very long time to know that he is slippery, he is not consistent when it comes to what he said. So we know he's up to something. And I can fault that because in the first place, there is no way you can claim that you win the governorship of Kaduna State without the board of Christian. It didn't happen in 2015, it did not happen in 2019, and even in 2023, it was a collective vote of Kaduna people that make the governor. Mm. Interesting. Um, many are calling for the head of the former governor, knowing the situation of things uh, in Nigeria, where we are after the just concluded elections. Um, some would call this uh, just concluded elections the most divided that Nigeria has seen, and there's still scars to show for it. Some people are saying he shouldn't have said this now, but there have been a better time for him to make this statement, and the reactions have been any different. You see, the issue of time is not the problem. But when you look at the time factor uh, issue about it is this man is simply trying to stir up a serious problem for the new administration. And that's why the new administration must watch out. I am not going to suggest for them what to do, but they must watch out. It's going to be dangerous for them to carry a snake in their back and think that it is he is a friend. Because this man will come, jam your head, 
create confusion in your calm, create confusion in the polity, create confusion among faithfuls in the country, and go and hide somewhere. And then tomorrow he will be called as if he is a mediator. What I see with a Rufai's statement or speech is that simply a man who will go and steer away fight between a husband and a wife and come back and want to act as a mediator. So a Rufai is known for this crafty and this terrible way of dealing with people. Even his friends know him. We actually tried in Kaduna State to manage such a slippery person for about eight years. And today he is no more our governor. But he does not want to leave the scene. He still wants to be recognized. He still wants to be acknowledged. He still wants to be heard. And that's why he's creating this confusion. Uh, yesterday in Kaduna, we had a meeting, of, uh, an interfaith meeting that was put together by groups. And we were there with Jamal Tunasi Israel. We look at all this conversation and we realize that it is uncalled for, it has no meaning, it does not, it does not have Islamic cause, and it is not with the support of Muslims. But you see, it's easy for such statements to steer up sentiment among Muslims and also steer up anger among Christians who do not understand. But I do know that Erufai do not enjoy the support of Muslims for what he is doing. Neither does Erufai see. We don't want to go into certain statements about the election, who win, who do not win, but we simply know that this kind of speech by the reply is up to something. He wants to steer up confusion in the polity, create new enemies for the new administration, and then prepare himself as a hero. Unfortunately, we know him better, and he has failed. Um, looking at the history of Kaduna State, knowing that there have been more religious crises and, of course, ethnic um, crises over the years, um, for for somebody like you, and of course, um, I think I have spoken with you and um, Sheikh um, Al Maraya. I, I don't know if I've gotten his name right. Yes, yeah, Sheikh Al Maraya. Yes. yes, on issues of um, you know conflicts in Kaduna State. How how is it possible to keep the peace? If the number one, formal number one, or somebody as highly placed as Elvify will continuously make statements like this, how is it possible uh, for you to keep the peace? It is not difficult to keep the peace because when we talk about keeping peace, we are talking about working with stakeholders to maintain understanding. And I can tell you that larger percentage of stakeholders know the person we are dealing with. You know, I earlier said somewhere today that one of the big problems with Nigeria is that people come into leadership without us as a nation having a provision that required that we check the mental capability of the people before we hand over our leadership to them. That's why we can have terrible people coming to leadership, fortunate to have been given the mandate by us, but they will turn to bring out their true color, they will turn to create problems among them. A true leader is supposed to find a way to unite the people. A true leader is supposed to find a way to build a, a cohesive society. But when the leader himself is the one that is promoting division, is promoting segregation, is promoting some, uh, abuse of other people's rights. Because as citizens of Nigeria, we didn't become citizens because we are Christians. We are citizens of Nigeria because we are Nigerians. Our faith does not matter of us being Nigerians. So we must be treated as Nigerians, respected as Nigeria. How could you swore by the constitution of Nigeria to defend and protect the constitution and then the constitution talks about everybody has equal rights, and you at that stage will come out to make such statement. But here you have the reply we're talking about. Some of us have known him for a very long time, and many times when we draw attention to people, some may not understand and assume we have certain spots to settle. We have no spot to settle with reply than simply saying, Watch out, this man is dangerous. Watch out, this man wants to divide. But I can tell you. That I've been speaking today since the, the video came out. I've been speaking with many, many Muslim clerics. They are ashamed because this to them is even giving their religion a bad name. But one of them said that I want to quote the way he put it. He said, Our religion promotes justice, our religion promotes fairness, our religion promotes equity. For him to hide under our religion to preach this, someone who do not know about our religion may assume we are in support of suppression, we are in support of uh taking advantage of people. That's not what the religions of Islam promote. When the Rufai was governor of Kaduna State, did he in any way actually promote Islam? And I'll tell you, no. He did not promote Islam in practice. He did not promote Islam in citing religious places. He did not promote Islam in whatever Islam stands for. The fact of all is that he insulted Islam and abused Islam. But because he is up to something, he has to still come back to play the religious card, thinking that everybody is not is blind. And I can say, I keep repeating this word, that he has fell even before he began, because everybody's eyes is open. Yes, 
They may have gotten a, an election announced in their favor, but that is not the matter. I can tell you, even if a Rufai's son is the one to have been announced as governor, he will know the difference between being fair and how to govern people when there is fairness from how to govern people when there is injustice. So talking about fairness and justice, um, people okay. want to be represented all levels, whether it's um, the governor, um, whether it is um, in the houses of assembly, especially knowing again, I have to keep harping on the plight of the people, what people in that state have suffered. Um, if the governor is saying this about who he, um, you know, who emerged as governor and deputy governor in his state, um, do are the people of uh, Kaduna State feeling well represented in terms of you know uh, the cabinet of the new governor? Um, tell me what you think about this new governor and you know the people. That well, the new governor have government. not yet formed any cabinet. He made some appointments, but there is no. You see, when you call a cabinet, a senior special assistant is not a cabinet member. He's just an appointee of governor. Uh, some of the people so far he has announced are not cabinet officers. But very soon he is going to come up with his cabinet officers, then we will judge him by what he said. I think it's going to be hasty for us to start saying, but I can say the Ubasani I know is not a Rufai. The Ubasani we have known is not a Rufai and is not going to be a Rufai. A Rufai is somebody who enjoys dividing people. He do not understand friendship. He do not understand relationship. He do not understand togetherness. Everything you see him promoting is about self, about his glory, about his power. I want to repeat that one of the things I have known with about Erufai for a long time, and I've said to people, is that he's suffering from complex. He does feel everybody looks down on me. Everybody thinks I cannot do it. So let me show them. I'm not sure that showing your might tells people that you are a leader. The fact about that your ability to relate with people who even look down on you but later on recognize your power is better than showing them might. But that is the way he wants to live his life. He has had his privilege to rule for eight years. He knows that Kaduna State suffer and so many people die during his eight years. He cannot even exonerate himself. And from this video, he shows that it shows that he has he had a hand in all the killings that happened just because he wanted to impoverish the people, create fear in the people, set confusion in the state. Well, whatever has a beginning must have an end. It is a tenant administration and the tenant has ended. He cannot recontest. A new person has to come. And this new person must come out with his style of leadership, must come out with his way of winning the people, must come out with his way of uniting the people. And I must give credit to the new governor because in his speech, he said the most important thing he is going to focus is security. I pray and I hope he will keep to his word and do not dance to the right or to the left to please somebody. Kaduna people may give him the mandate, not another person. So if he chose to hold that mandate sacred, hold that mandate dearly and deliver the services the people want him to deliver, I can tell you, it will not be long. You will hear the Kaduna you used to hear that people were killed, people are suffering, will cease to be, the. will become a Kaduna of joy. That Kaduna we know before where people will come to do holidays, where people will come to be happy. So I don't want to start thinking that Obasani will do like a Rupai. I am believing that he will be his himself and act responsibly according to the oath he took to defend and protect the constitution of the Federal Republic. And what is there in the constitution? He should protect lives and properties of citizens and those who reside in Kaduna State. You may mention the fact that uh, the new governor, Obasani, has spoken that he's going to deal with security. But what is security if there is no form of peace and togetherness. I know that, yes, people like you who are peace, um, you know, actors, do your best. But in a gender setting for this government, let's talk about that. Um, is the Christian Association of Nigeria, um, and of course, uh, the Muslim, uh, the, what is it called now? Um, yes, the Islamic Society, are they the going to band together? Yes, to set an agenda for the governor, because I'm guessing that there are people who will set a different agenda for the, the new administration. What should be the priority or top on your list when you're speaking directly to the governor? Well, before the swearing in of the governor, I think just immediately after he was declared the winner of the election, he set up a transition committee. And that transition committee had a, a, a subcommittee called Citizen Engagement Subcommittee. This committee met with Khan, 
They met with Jamaat to Nasri Islam. They met with different organizations. And the way they approached us, they said, look, can you come and share with us what are those things that did, were not done right in the outgoing administration so that we will not come and make a mistake? We went there and interfaced with them. We shared with them. We put our idea into right writing and also discussed with them extensively. Uh, we, we, we told them the peace of our mind. We told them how Kaduna is no longer united. We told them how people have been divided along religion and ethnic line. We told them how people were sacked from work without justification. We told them how we are people, junior officers were promoted from lower ranks and on top of those who are ahead of them. We bastardized the civil service. We told them so, so many things that you know ordinary we need to speak about. We also expressed concern with the debt a raising of debt that Kaduna State have gone into. So we speak to them honestly and we share our concern. The fact is that we were there early, so we were able to finish for two hours. We had engagement with them. Then the Jamaat to Islam came and other groups came. So I believe that he actually has put up a, uh, put up a machinery in motion to show that he's going to listen, he's going to attend to advice, and he's going to do what is right. To me, it will be hasty for me now to start thinking he's bad or this. Let me give him the benefit of the doubt. After the first 100 days, we will see the way he, uh, our people will say, we will see the way he used to uh, drink the soup. Then we will know whether he will take all the soup or he will not attend to people. But for now, let's give him the benefit of the doubt. And I've already said to you that in his speech, he makes a clear commitment for unity, a clear commitment for, uh, to address security matters. So we will work together. Look, what we've done is that our doors are open. We are willing to engage. We're not looking for government for anything. Some of us are well established where we are. What we simply want is give the citizens an enable environment for everybody to come out and exhibit that potential that God has deposited in him. But when you suppress others and you allow the killing of your citizens to go unchecked, then citizens will lose confidence. And once there's no more confidence, then the confusion we had eight years ago will continue. But we are hopeful that the confusion stops on May 29. What is happening now is that the final effort of those who were used to create the confusion to be cleared out, up, uh, out by this government so that Kaduna State will once again come back to be that happy state, a state that everybody yearned to come for NYC, everybody yearned to come for visit, everybody wished to be there. Because Kaduna State have always been, look, despite the history of our crisis, people have always cherished to come to Kaduna because the crisis will come and they will manage within a short time. But why we are we not able to manage this crisis in the last eight years because we had a driver who claimed that he knows. Unfortunately, he only know how to kick the car. He really didn't understand driving. Driving and kicking the car are two different things. Great. Uh, let, me, let me just ask you one last question. It's one thing to hope and trust and be positive that a governor will do what he's promised. Many governors have not, not kept to their promises. But then it's too early in the day to decide if Ubasani will be a good governor or not. Um, but let's talk about re-engineering the mindsets of the people, because the mindsets of the people have been wounded, they've been battered. People have lo lost loved ones. People hold grudges, especially when it has to do with ethnic and religious crisis. Um, what are you going to be doing with communities? Again, I speak to you as a peace activator. Um, what are you going to be doing to re-engineer the mindsets of the people in Kaduna State, whether they be Muslim, Christians, whatever uh, ethnic group? device they're from. What are you going to be doing in closing? Already we've been doing, and we'll just continue to do what we've been doing. Yesterday, when we were holding that interfaith meeting, the Kaduna Peace Commission were also holding another meeting with other people. So there are a lot of engagement going. But you see, there's something about peace form. I was speaking with one of our uh, uh, organizers yesterday uh, today, and I said to them, one of the most painful aspects of working for peace in Kaduna State is this, that you go and receive grant in millions of naira, come and invest to promote peace, but by one negative action of those in authority, by one careless statement of those who are in power, you will now destroy everything and all the success stories that you were thinking you will come out as harvest cease to be. But you see, there is a commitment towards ensuring Kaduna is peaceful. One, because as faith leaders, we have no option than to build Kaduna State for our children, for the generations to come. Number two, as responsible citizens, we have no other place we're going to run to than Kaduna. So we must work hard to make Kaduna peaceful. I have ever said this and I want to repeat. There was a time Kaduna was hot in February 2000 and in November 2002. Efforts were put in place. 
and we were able to sustain peace for nine good years and there were no more killings and tension until the post-election violence of 2011. We can still go back and pick those lessons. What were those things that we did right? Who were the kind of stakeholders we work with? They may, some of them may not be there, but the institutions are there. Institutions are beyond a human being. They are about a structure. And when we begin to work with that, work, and I, fortunately for us, Uba was around that time. Let me say this. One of the most interesting things that people don't know about our former governor is that he was never a Kaduna man. He was just privileged to hide under whatever to come and be governor of Kaduna. And that was why he got virtually everything wrong. And he also shows that he do not care whatever happened because after his governance, he's going to move away since he's not a Kaduna man. But we have gotten someone who is from Kaduna and we hope that he will understand how we used to live together, how we used to work together, how we gained success together. And he will not throw away that because the peace of Kaduna is the success of his government. The fact that it will be a plus for him for Kaduna to be peaceful because he is the governor and people will clap for him. Well, I want to say thank you. Reverend Joseph Hayab is the uh, chairman of the Christian Association of Nigeria, the Nigeria State Chapter. Thank you for speaking with us and keep up the good work. Thank you for having me, Mary. I appreciate it. Thank you. Stay with us. We'll take a quick break. When we return, we'll talk about the scandal behind Nigerian airspace. Thank you.